I'm Brian Hurt, and I'm with the Lincoln and Omaha Lego user group. And I have really been into making math displays. And, you know, it's kind of a funny thing because they're not for all tastes. And every now and then someone will just come up and they'll take a look at my builds and say, I don't like that. You know, I, they were not coming here expecting math and then they got it, uh, but that's how it goes. Now, for these first three, these are three different kinds of what are called knots, but you know, not a knot that like your shoelaces that you tie a knot and tie in a bow. In math, a knot is a single loop and they're classified by how many crossings they have. And so going from right to left here, we have, this is called a figure eight knot and it has four crossings. And I have little images of what it would look like in string. And I said, well, how do I make this, you know, in Lego, this is something that's rectangular and your eyeball has to be able to follow it. And so lighting really lent itself well to this. You can see it's actually a U shape that has a channel and you follow it all the way around and you follow the light with your eyeball, you can see essentially following the string getting that figure eight shape. Did, did the same with the knot that has three crossings, that's called a trefoil knot. And then you just have to make the, uh, the loop of string. That's the trivial knot on the left. These weren't originally lit up, and when I put lights in them, this is all aftermarket LED lights, it was so bright, it was just your, it was too much to look at. So they're actually all aimed inwards with white tape on the back. And I think it's a really nice uh, kind of indirect light effect that comes out. No, it really makes the builds pop and stand out quite a bit. Like you said, also helps your eye kind of follow what's going on. I was really pleased with this. Another thing, uh, the way that I made this was taking advantage of the fact that two studs across and five studs and five plates up make a square. So if you look at this, this is all uh, done with uh, using cubes. So in fact, you could rotate this 90 degrees and it would still be, it would look like Lego. You'd really have to look close to see well the plates are on top rather than on the side. And I'll take a look if we, I mean, this one really tells the story. You turn it on its side and it still looks the same way it did and you turn it on its side again. And that's not something you get with all your Lego models that you can rotate across three different axes and still have it look exactly the same and look pretty good, I think. So I'm really happy with how these came out. Uh, Next up is the Mandelbrot set. And this is um, also known as the Fortress of Solitude. And what happens is about 90% of the people come up and say, it's the Fortress of Solitude. And that really makes me happy. And 10% of the people come up and say, it's the Mandelbrot set. And that really makes me happy because this is a, a pretty famous fractal. And the idea is normally you show this in two dimensions. It's a uh, repeated calculation. And if I could just sort of lean in, this is the real number line, and this is the imaginary number line. And you're doing a calculation over and over again to see if any given number succeeds or fails. Uh, as I showed in my little card here, normally the way you do it in two dimensions is with colors. And the different colors show whether something fails quickly or fails after a number of calculations, or if it's black in the middle, it never fails at all, and it's in the set. And I said, well, Heck, I can do that with Lego in three dimensions and just build up in one color. Now, I built this and I liked it. And my wife said, you know, Brian, you should really add lights. And as we all know, the best time to add lights to the bottom of a mock is when you're done building it. So, all right, we'll do it. And so I added lights and I really like them. And then I got this to a show and a buddy said, hey, that's the Fortress of Solitude. I said, all right, we'll get Superman on it. So he, he always says if I ever win awards, he gets a third of the credit for telling me to add Superman. But I, again, uh, this one really looks nice at, in the dark because really all that lights up is the middle. And so all you see is the, the negative space rather than the mock itself. Uh, and as you can see, um, you know, white is really the, the theme here. I'm really trying to play a lot with the form uh, and the color of the lights, but there really isn't any color to the Lego to speak of. And then the last set I have over here, and this is something people probably would most, most be familiar with. These are uh, just regular graphs of uh, Z, so the uh, vertical dimension based as a function of X and Y. And so uh, the one at the bottom would be the saddle. Um, the one at the top is uh, an inverted uh, paraboloid, just a slope. And on the left is a, a trig function. What was really interesting about these was I needed to build on, I'm gonna 
these may break a little bit, but I want to pull it off to show you. They're built on um, 16 by 16 trans plates. And in order to get these to work, I just had to make it so they would just lower and settle straight in. And if you look on the inside, those are LED strips that are running all the way around the whole thing four times. And it gets actually pretty warm by the end of the day. And that's a trick. If you can get LED strips warm, it means you've really run a lot of them and you haven't insulated them very well. So I'll have to replace a few of these vertical lines that just fell off. But um, it's been a pretty sturdy structure. And again, not for, uh, not for all tastes, but I will say that there are some people who, they tell me that it just really stands out from the rest of the room. It's fun to see what you can do with Lego that's just a little different. I wish I could build a lot of the other things that are in here. That's not my skill. Uh, I have a lot of fun with math and also trying to make it look beautiful and not just, I, I've made some math structures that won't see the light of day because they're just a bunch of nothing by the time I'm done with them. It's got to have some artistic value as well. I mean, this is a good reminder that Lego is a very mathematical product. And even like Lego designers, when they're working on sets, will use a lot of math in that process. So for you personally, do you have kind of a professional mathematics background? Or are these just things that kind of piqued your interest over the years that you wanted to try to tackle? I have an engineering background, and I have taught science. And I'm always looking for something that is going to appeal to me first as, as the audience. And if it makes, I figure if it makes me happy, it'll make somebody else happy. And, and there are a lot of people in here, even though I, I kind of joke that some people, it makes them angry. There are some people that really brings them joy and they remember doing this too. And some math teachers come through or engineers and they know right what it is. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's, it's the Mandelbrot set if that's what you want. And it's the Fortress of Solitude if that's what you want. And for me, it's a little bit of both, I think. There we go. I love that approach. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to explain each of these builds here and for bringing them out to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming to Omaha. Appreciate it.